All right, so this is the third and last video in our sort of zap link rendering workflow here inside ZBrush. So we're going to look at a few custom materials that we can use to render out some custom masks and uh, use in our Photoshop composite. So just like in the previous demos, I'll go ahead and just merge my bricks down into a single layer. Actually, I'll just dupe everything and flatten it. And I'll just work on a copy. Okay, so again with a large draw size and focal shift, I'm going to turn Z add off. I don't care about my color anymore because we've captured that in previous tutorials. So I'm going to go ahead and just paint down just the basic material. Make sure I've got that fully coated here. Whoops. So the first one we can look at is just a basic cavity mask. I'm going to want to go ahead and make sure my shadows are off inside of my render properties. And I'll start off just by bringing the ambient all the way up and the diffuse all the way down. Turn off any specular contribution. And uh, right away as we start giving a, a cavity intensity and a cavity radius, we're not going to see anything happen. We've got to execute a best render. Uh, so make sure you know, anti-aliasing is low and shadows are off just to just to speed it up. And if we bring cavity colorize all the way up, uh, then you see then we're start to get our cavity effect. And of course we can just dial it in with the cavity settings here. Um, so maybe an intensity of, I don't know, start kind of low at 20. Um, actually, maybe that's pretty good. So we could go a little bit broader here, uh, but I'm going to keep mine pretty tight. So we might at this point want to zap like that. In fact, actually, let's do that. Okay, so I've got the cavity out of ZBrush. I'm just going to bring it into my document here. And now, before we look at that in Photoshop, let's try one more setting. So this cavity map in particular represents the valleys inside of this model here. But if we give it a negative cavity intensity, let's actually just try negative 20, then what we're doing now is we're basically defining the peak areas. So I'm going to go ahead and zap link that as well. And I'll just bring it into our document. So now what we can do with these two passes, if I just go ahead and start with just a base local color here, it's a neutral gray, and we'll start off with our our uh, valley map here. And I'll just go ahead and name that, let's see, cavity valleys Oops, spelled wrong, but that's fine. And I'll just copy that and then paste it into some new color. Doesn't matter much what it is for now. But I'm going to need to go ahead and actually invert that. So now I'm starting to use this just as a way to sort of get some different colors or texture layers into those valleys. Now I can copy the peaks and just blend whatever I want now in there. But I'll have to invert that guy as well. So now, you know, right away we've got a couple of really nice masks to use to just sort of, you know, bring out some of the, the peaks and then something to just put some dirt or something into some of the valleys and just, you know, blend away. So the cavity masks are really good ones to use. Another good one is um, let's take a look at the outline material. I'll just go ahead and turn preview render back on and I'll just paint that over the canvas. So if we take a look at the modifiers, essentially what we can do is we can use this to do just a quick sort of um, curvature map. So we're just detecting the edges of our model here. So a few of the things we can do to control this are, you know, first we've got our depth A. So you see we can start to sort of change at what angle we're starting to you know, generate this mask, um, which, is, which is nice. It'll give you those edges. But you could create a little bit of a subtler mask by bringing the cavity detection up a little bit and now you can start to use depth B 
and maybe give that um, a positive or a negative value. And you can start to to get you know varying degrees of of um, alpha at these edges. So right away you can start to get a decent sort of cavity map here. Uh, let's go ahead and just zap link that as well. Sorry, I said cavity map, but I meant to say curvature map. And I'm just going to copy that and just pick some other color, maybe something like that. And now you can kind of see just how I'm just, you know, blending in some of the um, the curvature edges here of the models. So that's a really good pass. And then, of course, combine that with the uh, cavity valleys and then eventually the cavity peaks, which, you know, cavities we should probably keep kind of subtle. Um, this particular guy works best when you're actually blending in another texture. Uh, so if you were to blend like a, a marble texture or something out of stone, you could almost use it to get like a chipped edge effect. Or you could also then go ahead and, and do some additional like artistic filters on it to kind of break it up and uh, make it look like it's sort of like chipped metal edges or something or chipped paint along the edges of a model. Uh, so the outline material is, is great to get like a quick curvature. Another good one is going to be the gradient map. So right away, if we paint that down, there's some issues with it. And of course, we're going to want to turn our ambient all the way up and our diffuse all the way down, turn off our specular contribution. But we still are getting some you know, noise in here. And that's just simply just from the noise parameter. So we'll go ahead and zero that out. And the way this material works is it's essentially a gradient map on the, um, the depth of the canvas. So with that in mind, if we go into the modifiers here and we look at shader one, I'm going to go ahead and zero these guys out. We're not really concerned with those right now. We're going to look mainly at the Z factor, the X factor, and the Y factor. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a, an X factor of zero. That's going to make sure that this is completely tileable and horizontally. Um, I generally never use that unless you were to bring it all the way up if you wanted like vertical stripes. Um, you could do that. All right, so I'm going to zero out the X factor. Now you see if we zero out the Y factor and just focus on Z, essentially what we're doing is we're tiling this texture in a way through the depth information. And by that I mean if we take a look at the texture that's assigned here, oops, right here, then you'll see it's just a one pixel gradient. Um, we could use any other texture. In fact, I like to use the jelly bean texture a lot, but it's going to look at just the first just the first row of pixels. Um, so when we use the jelly bean texture, it's actually a great way to get some hue variation. Uh, so and then of course you can you can just get like a broad hue offset uh, just with a low z factor here. Or then you can start sort of tiling it and getting like the full range of those hues in there. So let's go ahead and just best render that and zap link and uh, send that to Photoshop. All right, so let's bring that into our document here. Now, one thing, maybe before we do that, one thing we can use that for is just to quickly sort of offset our, our base color here. So if I had just like a red rock or something, uh, you know, I could just give it a base coat here. And then um, I could just simply offset this maybe just by setting it to color and, you know, dialing down the, int the opacity a little bit. So pretty quickly I can just get a little bit of hue variation in my texture. And of course it's going to work really well with my, my normal map because it's all derived from my, my, uh, my depth information. And it's actually, it's not unlike doing this. If we just go ahead and grab our, um, our, our depth map from the zap length file, 
we could also go ahead and just create a gradient map here in Photoshop and then just give it something. So essentially that's all we're doing is we're, we're basically looking to some type of gradient and then we're remapping that texture on the depth. So you could do it in Photoshop as well but a lot of times I'll just you know render out a few of these maps and just use them to create a little bit of variation in Photoshop. Could multiply it down, soft light it, color. Um, just gives you some quick variation. Another thing is you could just desaturate this or sometimes I'll just give it a black and white texture and um, go ahead and just you know really up the Z factor and get it really tiling. Maybe that's a better texture. No, oh, not that one. Maybe that one. There we go. And you can kind of use this to just, you know, as a mask. So you could also, you could layer a couple different textures in Photoshop or you know, get different types of effects just with a, a black and white mask. Another thing you can do is, is introduce the Y factor. So if we start raising that, essentially what we're going to start doing now is, is you could almost think of it as like rotating the stripes across these forms. So if we really bring it up, then you can see here in the swatch we're starting to create these horizontal stripes across our form. Uh, and we, of course we can tile them by raising the Z factor, or tighten them rather. And it's going to uh, really start wrapping it around the form. So this can be a, a really nice way to, to kind of quickly get some stripes across your model. But you'll have to start, you know, playing with a few different textures to see what, you know, works well and what doesn't. But the gradient map is, um, is a really good material to just kind of almost procedurally get some nice sort of, you know, layered depth color or masks um, or to get some quick stripes across your model uh, or across your surface here. Uh, other than that, um, some other go-to materials for me anyway are at least the framer because uh, I can use this almost as like a sharpening layer inside Photoshop or maybe Framer 4. That might be a good way to also sort of overlay this in Photoshop and get a little more detail out of your textures. Another one I like is the Sketch Gummy. This can be another way just to layer some color and texture or uh, you know again just use as like an overlay and as almost almost as like a sharpening or contrast pass. Alright so that's about it for additional materials. I will say that uh, you know once you find a material that works really well for you like a um, like a like a gradient map setting or you know an outline material or, or generic cavity uh, material or something. Um, once you have something that you like you can go ahead and then just save that to a library somewhere on disk just by saying material save and then bring that up to to reuse it to render out your various passes for other textures. Um, so in the next video We'll take a look at um, using all the passes that we've created in the last couple of tutorials. We're going to use them in Photoshop to do some additional blending.